you're dealing in a massive population like Europe or America, a bespoke manufacturing context doesn't make sense. If it's good, why don't you just pump it out? But in Australia, we're so far away, we have a relatively small population. Many times when we were first starting, manufacturers here would just say to Russell, oh, look mate, you're dreaming, you'll never get this manufacturing in Australia, just go to China. I don't know what you're wasting your time for here. You make money with the mass-produced imported items, not with the very limited edition locally designed items. That's the reality. Some places are synonymous with a great tradition in furniture and object design. Just think of Italy or Scandinavia. Australia is not one of them. But on this tour you'll meet a community of local furniture makers who are tackling this reputation head first. This tour doesn't just show you some pretty objects around Surrey Hills, it also gives you the background on the local furniture design community. 20 years ago, uh, anything that was regarded as being worth anything had to be imported. But that has changed enormously over the last 20 years um, and it's sort of become a little bit of kudos for companies which, if they also support local designers. This tour is not just about the obstacles designers face in this country, but about starting out and being successful in spite of them. I guess uh, since uni we'd always had this dream to start our own company and develop a brand that supported uh, Australian design and Australian designers. We, we both um, quit our jobs and decided to take a risk. When you start, I think often you do it out of passion and, and enjoyment and the thirst for exploration rather than the big dollars. Well, certainly I did. Many of the designers start out with firm ideas of what niche they'd like to fill, what process they're passionate about, or what materials they most like to work with. We always had this idea of making fully industrial design, mass manufactured products that somehow retained this idea of craft and the handmade and particularly textiles. The idea of being the master of your craft, not just being a designer, but also taking complete control out of aspects of the production and letting the material and the manipulation of the material inform the design or generate the design in some ways. And one of the most fascinating aspects of this tour is getting to know all the different approaches designers take to have their work made. Some choose to painstakingly handcraft their pieces. So I really thought about what is the best way to learn and that's really to learn by making. So I started manufacturing furniture. Luckily I've got all my fingers still. While others rely on and are even passionate about industrial processes. I don't have any manufacturing skills, so I'm not a ceramicist or a woodworker or a carpenter or you know a weaver or any of those things, so um, my mind is my craft workshop. Over a period of time I had noticed lots of little vans and trucks with air conditioning ducting on the back of their truck. I was thinking there must be a lot of workshops that work in sheet metal. And so I thought, I need to get involved in sheet metal. There's obviously a lot of people that do it, it means it wouldn't be hideously expensive. I just need to get involved and create something. Well, that evolved into the stool, the crumb stool. Throughout the tour, you'll also hear the sometimes very personal stories behind specific designs and objects. The kissing pendants were based on any loving relationship that involves some kind of embrace. I guess it was loosely based on myself and my partner. The switching mechanism is that so that when you push the two pendants together, a, magnet, a magnetic attraction holds them together and when they touch, their lights turn on. So when they're apart, the lights are off and when they're together, their lights are on. Other times, there are very straightforward approaches. I decided that an interesting approach would be to try and make something that was just made out of really solid materials that wasn't ironic in the way that, or, you know, theoretical in that way, it was just, just good. This tour is also about the mishaps, the false starts and the funny bits. Initially, it's quite funny, initially we designed that light so that people would go out, go out and steal a traffic cone and then just put in this light fitting that we had designed for it. But then we're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't be encouraging theft. <laughs> theft. So we decided to, you know, refine it and make it a, you know, a, a, a whole product rather than something you can just attach to it. 
So considering that two decades ago there wasn't much of a local flavour to furniture and object design, you might find yourself being surprised about some very new and creative approaches that marry art and design, handmade and mass produced, or tackle very new kinds of collaborations. About three and a half years ago, somehow on the internet, I stumbled across um, weaving from Arnhem Land and just, I don't know why, but for some reason it just really struck a chord with me and I thought, wouldn't it be fantastic? I wonder if there's some way and whether it would be possible to translate this weaving into sort of contemporary interior design products. The women are just not interested at all in um, sort of producing the same thing over and over again. So um, each piece in a way needed to be unique. Basically the women are given complete freedom to interpret the form in whatever way they want. And that's why every time we get um, another shipment of the shades, it's just like winning the lottery because it's just such a joy to open up the box and see what they've actually come up with. The Audio Design Museum is a living museum where the city becomes the exhibition space. You could look at it like an urban safari about creativity. If you want to do the entire tour, you can download it to your device and print out the maps, which will guide you to the individual locations and give you some backgrounds on the designers. There you can listen to designers in their studios, their galleries and businesses. So it's a show and tell about their ideas, their creativity and about the work they've made.